Lovely. Okay, then, moving on. Kristen, uh, hi, Jason. I would like to know how both of you choose your next projects. Is it just by mood or is there a system behind choosing the next picture to work from? I've got lots of beautiful reference photos and they're overwhelmed with the decision what to do next, uh, as I would like to do five at the same time. <laughs> well, um, what about you, Jason? Okay, regarding the overwhelmed part of it, I think that's because you've got access now to so many images, so many fantastic images. 20 years ago, we didn't. I was using slide film to take my own photos and all the problems that came with that. Unless you was a, if you want to produce really incredible detailed artwork, I think you need a really incredible reference photo. So you even need to get hold of it. Now you can do it on the internet by paying for them or using free sites. So you need to be a really good photographer in the right light in at the right time. Um, so there's lots of advantages with that. And okay, so I, I went off at a tangent then, but I've come back. Um, so that's the overwhelmed part of it. And I think the way around that is to look at the photos, see one that really grabs you and you know when it does it and just use that. Don't then think, because this is the mistake, okay, that, was, that one's really good. I'll put that one to the side. Let's look for the next one. And they find another one. Oh, that may be even better. I'll have that one on the side as well. And then they keep looking and looking. And before you know it, a half a day is gone. You've got 20 fantastic photographs and you don't feel like painting or drawing anymore. And you don't know which one to pick. So I think when one really grabs you for the right reasons, and it should usually be the lighting, over the detail. I think that's usually what makes the piece to, to really start it and make a go of it quite quickly, even if you just get the drawing down, rather than have too many things going at once. And as far as um, she'd like to have five going at the same time, whenever I've had three or two going at the same time, that's the time I've not finished one. And that's, I've only ever in 20 odd years, there's only one I've never finished. And that's because I had three paintings going at the same time. Now I stick to one. I do one and I make sure I finish it. That's my rule. I always finish it. Because if you start not finishing, for me anyway, that snowball could really get out of control quick. So okay. that's my little rule there. Totally agree. That's what I do. Mm. How do you go about choosing your, your next projects? Um, well, you usually, can... simple flexes, really. One is that we get a lot of feedback from our um, website and our members yep. and Facebook and so on. And I usually govern by that. If people start thinking, oh, I really love doing that, I think, hmm, okay. Then I'm on the lookout for something similar. Uh, another thing is, uh, it's my mood. She mentions mood. It's how I feel. And I go through, as you know, I go through different um, moods. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And if I find I'm enjoying something, I'll carry on with that same subject. Uh, and then again, uh, I might think like I did today when we were chatting earlier, do you know, I want to do something different. I want to, I want to break the mould now. Yeah. And, uh, and I am. We're going to the next picture is going to be different. Yeah. And found, when you start looking like that, you find it. And uh, I, so I know I've never had a problem with the... With the uh, yeah. um, I, th I think with um, me and Colin, it's, it's a bit different because a lot of the time we teach in something specific that we haven't done before, perhaps. So it, it could be black fur or white fur or, or lighting effect or, or texture effect or something like that. So most people wouldn't have to be concerned with that. So sometimes I pick something just like Colin would like that. Other times then you feel like, OK, I've done enough of those. Now I need to do something for myself, something I'm interested in to keep it motivating as well so um i think that's the way we kind of have got to do it we've got to combine the work and play elements to the two of it um to, to keep it going but generally with a photograph it's it's what speaks to you really isn't it that 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 brings out the best work the one that really speaks to you um, I, totally agree. I totally agree with jason there and a point i'd just add to that is you've got to want to do it if if you don't if you're doing it for the sake of it, it's yeah. not going to work. You no. don't want to actually do that picture yeah. because otherwise you won't get the enthusiasm, and the enthusiasm won't come through the teaching. So, I I, I think there's, there's something you've got, you've got to learn from this. You've got to say, okay, I want to do something different, something exciting, 
And when you find that, that enthusiasm comes in and say, right, now I'm going to go. And that reflects right through the, the project. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Lovely. Well, thanks, Kristin. That's a, that's a great question. Uh, moving on to Debbie. How does Colin feel about fixatives? I am too afraid to spray, spray mine, and I know how Jason feels about it, except for the new fixatives. Just curious. Uh, Dad, do you want to describe your yeah, thoughts on fixatives? Yes, well, I used to fix my work years ago in the Carmathello days. I used to fix it because Carmathello, I found, especially on the Ongre, I'm talking about really, it wouldn't happen so much on, on the pastel mat. Um, but on Ongre, it used to dull the work down, and yeah. I used to think, oh dear. Um, that's gone, that sky has gone really dark. And what I used to do then is go over the top of it with uh, more pastel, so with more color there. And I did that for quite a while. Well, however, I didn't fix it after that, so it really lost its point, didn't it? Yeah. And now I don't fix them, no. I find that uh, it does take the, the, it down a lot. I don't know, I haven't fixed a pastel map picture, have you, Jason? I've spent more money on pastel fixatives looking for the Holy Grail than I think anybody else has. And I'm not going to say how much it is in case my wife sees this video <laughs> later on. Um, lots and lots of people, professional artists, have, have told me they've used a certain pastel uh, fixative. It doesn't dull the colours. It fixes it solidly um, and all that. And so with my research and development background, I love to run tests. So then I, I buy the fixative, I set all the colors up with uh, soft pastels and pastel pencils and do strips and blank them off and spray half of them. And I can categorically say that of the probable 20 or more fixatives I've tried, there's absolutely not one that will fix it on pastel mat and not alter the colors. Yeah. Or the tone, not one. That's, that's, I've found. that's answered the question. <laughs> but what's worse is that usually, if you get a cotton wool bud or a, a piece of cotton or a white tissue or something like that, after you've allegedly fixed them, ninety-nine out of a hundred, you can actually still wipe the pastel straight oh. off. Mm -hmm. So not only have you dulled the colours, and this is on pastel mat, you've dulled the colours and it's not even fixed it. That's right. So what's oh. the point? Waste of time, isn't yeah, it? but there's only one, and that's Clayfontaine's own um, freezer spray, they call it, that has just come out. It's, it's only available in, in Europe, really, at the moment, and that's a solvent. And what it actually does, it, it basically melts the pigment into the surface of the paper, and then it's 100% fixed. Now, it does darken certain colors, some of them substantially, others not at all. So it's a bit, bit um, you know, touch and go there. But the, the good thing is that you can put a, uh, an underlayer down, spray it. So say you wanted to do something very dark and then you had a very light sky, you could leave the sky, put the dark bottom on, spray it, and that is 100% fixed. So you could put your sky on top and then finish off, you know, on your darks. So it's, it's got its advantages for an underlayer but I would never personally ever spray a finished drawing. I, I've done it. I did a flamingo and tried it out. And luckily on that, it barely altered any of the colors, but it was probably luck because, because of the colors I chose. So I wouldn't go spending 10, 20 hours on a, a real big drawing and then spray it to find that's ruined it. I've got to do all the details again um, on there. But th that's the only one that I've found that does actually do what it says and it does really fix it, but fix it and possibly ruin it at the same time. But for an underlayer, I find it really, it can be really useful. Mm, that's really interesting and, and quite validating to hear your experiences with fixative mm. as well. I know for a lot yeah. of people have that question. With yeah. us. The other thing that spray does that Colin may be interested in, because I know you do some uh, white on black backgrounds, don't you? The same as I've done a couple as well. So if you use the anthracite pastel mat, they call it black, but it's really dark gray. That's if right. you spray the paper with, with this freezer spray, it makes it pitch black. Yeah. So when it dries, it stays pitch black. So that's really handy because you've then got a black paper, a real true black paper to work on top of. Yeah. Mm, that's interesting. 
yeah, really interesting. Well, maybe, well, maybe we'll give that a go because it's. Uh, you did a moonlight moonlight scene on mm. on, on that, but uh, it's not quite dark. It's not really my kind of cinema. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the I like the dark grey pastel that very much. That's my favourite. And all oh, right, yeah, that, yeah. Um, I, you know, you can get pretty dark with that. I, I, I don't yes, know. definitely. What I say about the spray is, I say to people, buy it and try it out. You know, I show on YouTube exactly what it does. I show it darkening the colours and not darkening other colours. And then people complain then when they have it and they say, oh, I darkened the colours. I say, well, yeah, I've shown you that, but you've got to try these things out yourself. I can review things, but get the smallest bottle you can and just give it a go. And if you find it of use, great. Same with the pencils. We like Pitt and Carbothello. Someone else may say they're a bit hard. You know, it comes down to personal prefer preference anyway with all of it, which is good because we're all different. Fantastic. Okie dokie, let's move on to uh, Karen's question. Does the light fast rating of a pencil influence what colours or pencils you use? You're going to ask me first. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I'll ask you the difficult one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't, absolutely not. I don't even look at those kind of fasteners. I don't even look at them. I choose a pencil because it's a pencil that I want. Not because of like, if you go through that rule, you could have a lot of problems. Because mm. you say, well, I, I, I don't, I want to use that colour, but it's not as, as light fast as that. So I'll use that one and ruin it. Sorry. Well, that's my view. I don't know what Jason did, but that's, that's my view. Well, I've never taken notice of that. For the, for the first three years, my four years with pastels, I took no notice of that either. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And um, the, I, what I've done with all my pencils, because like you, I've got four or more full sets of pencils, but I've, obviously I've got to buy those to review them, otherwise I wouldn't have. Um, it's not like I'm addicted to buying pencils or anything. <laughs> but, but what I do, I use my dark gray pastel mat and I make a color swatch because the color of the pencil pretty much never is the color at the back of the pencil. You know, the color, the little color they put on the back of the pencil it just doesn't match up usually. So fairly recently I did that. And funnily enough, I, um, I had a bit of card over the one side of these and they spent the whole of last summer when we had that really hot weather on my easel, which is like baked under the sun. And when I uh, put new color on there to freshen them up, there were some colors that was substantially different, right? So I looked then into the uh, light fastness rating on the colors and seeing if they matched up. And sometimes they didn't match up. But what I found was the colors that were the worst were the, the vibrant purples in particular. Now, what lots of companies do, and I, I think they do this anyway, quite craftily, they say all our colors in the color range are, are extremely light fast or very good light fast. Okay, fantastic. But then when you look in that color range, they haven't got any of the purples in there. So what they've done, they've, they've all used the same kind of pigments and they found all oh, the purples are not uh, very light fast. So some companies like say Geoconda that has these very vibrant colors that I really love, have got the purples in there. Other, other ones then like say a Carbothello doesn't have those very punchy purples in there. So they've chosen to say, we're keeping it more light fast. We are taking those colors out. Whereas Geoconda is saying, you make the decision. You know, we're saying they're light fast one, but do you want to use that purple or not? It's up to you. Because otherwise, like Colin says, say you're doing something very vibrant, like a butterfly that needs that color. Are you going to do it a different color to keep it light fast? Or are you going to use that color and make it realistic? And those colors that I found were almost all in the Derwent range but then they've got those lovely range of colors. So the secret is, I think, don't put your finished work in absolute direct summer sunshine through a light, a window, and expect it to last forever. It shouldn't be like that anyway. It should never be in like a conservatory in, in blasting light. So in that case, if it's kept in good condition, I think it's okay to use the full range. There, there may be one or two that really, really alter that I would take out, but it is out of my four sets. It's only one or two in the Derwent, and then I'd have to make that decision. 
you know, because they do fade a lot. Mm. You agree with that? You said that about um, pictures in light, sunlight before. Uh, you? Absolutely, yes. We've told, we, we, we've passed that advice many times on our podcast. Mm. Don't put any of, I wouldn't dream, none of my pictures in, in hanging anywhere in our yeah. house here is in direct sunlight, not one. Yeah. That's not chance, that's because I've got, I don't want them to fade, and they will fade, no matter how good they are. Yeah, exactly right. So I wouldn't do that. After all, they're going through glass as well. Yeah. So you've got an extra bit of sunlight, and uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and you can put them behind UV glass, but I'm pretty sure when I looked at UV glass 15 years ago, that put a bit of a colour cast on there then, that the UV glass wasn't actually as perfectly clear as normal glass, I think. It may be different now, but that, that would possibly be one way to, to help it. But I, I don't really worry that much about the um, colour fastness of the pencils. Yeah. Personally. I don't think people have got a lot to worry about. When they go starting their picture, they don't want to start worrying about that because that's one, another level of anxiety that exactly. adds to the, the ones that they're going to have anyway. They're exactly. foreboding. How, is this going to turn out right? How am I going to cock it up? All of these things. Yeah. Well, until you get experience, that you, you, you can overcome that. But at the beginning, you don't want to add to it. No, exactly. You certainly add to it if you start telling people about that. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of beginners now, they're thinking, because we didn't have it back when we started, they're thinking, which brand of pencil should I get? Because there's loads. We may have had a choice of one or two. Do we need pan pastels? Do we need pastel sticks? Should they be soft sticks? Should they be hard sticks? Should I buy the really expensive ones or the cheapest ones? Okay. And that's why on lots of my beginner videos, I just say, just use the pencils. Simple as that. One sheet of paper, handful of pencils, you're done. That's it. Then you can relax and concentrate on it. And then if you love it and you think, oh, I'd like to try some pan pastels, buy a couple of colors and add to your set. My sets have taken me four years to build up. And a lot of that, I've got a lot because of reviewing things. That's part of what I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't have this much. It becomes so confusing that you don't learn to work with the pencils you've got. You're learning to look through your list and try and find the exact match all the time rather than lay one color down and put another color on top to influence the other color to mix to make that exact color that you want. You're looking for pencil, you know, a new pencil all the time which is not the way to work, really. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great advice, guys. Um, thank you so much. And Karen, I hope that helps. That was a, a great question. Um, right, the next question. Oh, my goodness. I'm probably going to butcher this name. Kat, Kat, uh, Katazina? I hope, or I hope I've said that uh, correctly. I'm so sorry if I haven't. Um, how to achieve... With a soft pastel white, pure hair slash whiskers on cat's faces. Um, when I do it with my pastels, the colours are mixing together and I'm not able to get white fur. I'm using the Claire Fontaine pastel mat, I believe, there, uh, for the pastels. Um, pan pastels for the background. I don't know what to do to make it white. I've tried everything. Used three different white pastels, a white uh, gel pen, acrylic paint, coloured pencil. Nothing works. Um, and I see that people do it with one single stroke. Please help. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think well, that? we know that that question comes up so many times, so many times, whiskers. First of all, the problem you've got is you've just finished the tiger or the cat and you've spent hours and hours doing it, and now you're poised with a white pencil. The first thing that comes in, you're, am I going to cock this up? In that case, you will, because that's if you think like that, you're going to do it. We recommend, and I would always recommend people have a this. You've got to have a sharp pencil for this. If it doesn't work out unless you, because if you have a blunt pencil or a semi-blunt pencil, it's going to attract all the other colours, and uh, you're going to end up with a mess. But what I do, I get a, a sharp white. Sometimes I use. Have you tried the general white pencil, uh, charcoal yeah. pencil? Charcoal, yeah. That, that's a little stronger. Um, I, I won't use that unless I have to. So generally speaking, I use a nice sharp white pencil and zip them in. Chip on that. People say, yeah, but I, I, I can't do that. If you start drawing it, it won't work. You've got to zip them in. And I've done hundreds and hundreds of pictures now with uh, doing that system. And it works for me. Works for me. I don't know about Jason. 
Yeah, exactly the same. I've shown this in detail on so many YouTube videos because, as you said, this question comes up absolutely all the time. Um, yeah, the, you need a sharp pencil, definitely. A softer pencil can go over a underdrawing a bit more easy, but then you've got the problem with a soft pencil. You can't sharpen it as easily, and when you're using it, it blunts like instant, so you can have a really thick whisker. Um, what I do, I do it with Generals, Pitt, Carbothello, sharpen it right up. But what I actually do when I'm doing the stroke, I'm, I'm actually twirling the pencil a little bit, sure. twisting it. Collins probably may even be doing it and you're not even knowing you're doing it. You know, it's so second nature to do it. And you're actually twirling the pencil just a little bit. And that's taking the bit that's getting dirty away because it, it always picks up a little bit off the underlayer and it's giving it clean, clean, um, Pastel is just coming along. So is that what you do as well, Colin? Just yeah, to what I, do, I, I, I twist the pencil. If I'm doing, uh, say, a, yeah. a, a tigers, which is yeah. the front on, I turn the picture around so my hand does that. Yeah. Don't try doing that. See? Exactly. Yeah. Go with the way of the whisker. And then when the other side, you turn around the other way and go the other way. Exactly. Yeah, now, it's, it's a bit more. Turn it round. If, you, if you've got it straight in front of you and try it, you're drawing it. it yes, it work. that's it. It's a bit more difficult when you've got the added pressure. You've spent all that time and then you're videoing it as well. That's a bit more added <laughs> pressure. That's the key, yes, yes. Yeah. This is and the sometimes you do. Comes in, so now I'm going to do the whiskers, folks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> zip, 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 as quick as I can. And I've made mistakes. I've, I've wrecked it, you know, and done one. I thought, oh, no. But then I've had to fix it. So, you know, rub it out a bit, put a bit more background okay. in. Okay. It's good, okay. You know, it's good to show people that it can be fixed. I think the other problem she was referring to probably is when you're doing a white animal, so a white cat, and then she's putting soft pastel or whatever on top, and it, it's not going that vibrant or that pure white that she wants. And what I found with pastel mat is if you want something to be pure white, you don't want to put any colors underneath it as an underlayer. If you want something to be really dark, pure black, you don't want anything underneath it because a pure color is always going to pick up some of that pastel underneath, you know? So it, it's going to, if you've got a dark gray under there and you're trying to put white on top, it's going to muddy it slightly, at least even with pastel mats. So, you know, try and keep your colors a bit more pure or your tonal values more pure on your blacks and your whites. And that's what I show on my videos, really, to go in more with the pure colours. Mm. Great tips. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, 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 the most common asked question, that is. Mm. And the problem that... Mm. Are we done? We've got one more, uh, and this is one that came through, uh, through our page from Ian. Um, and Ian says, Colin likes the colour shaper and Jason likes the blending stumps. Both turn out good paintings. Do you think that you would change shapers? I think he means, would you change? Would you switch? Would I use a, would I use a, a blender? You used blender to use stump. the blender stump. Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I used to blend the stumps. Yeah, before before um, shapers came along. Yes, I was using blending stumps. Just like Jason does. Uh, yeah, I, I prefer I prefer the um, uh, shapers though. Personally, that's only personal. It's because we use them in different ways. Yeah. You're using them to, to slightly blend your colours together, whereas mm -hmm. I'm using the stumps on the initial layer to push the, the pastel yeah. down into the paper. I do the same thing, but I, I would use a pencil as, a, as opposed to a stump. It, it, yeah. It's different, it's different ways of doing it. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. As, as Ian said, they both have come out all right, so... Yeah, you've got to try it. I think you've got to try it. Yeah, this is thing we do. Both of us do on our on our videos. Is suggest this is what we suggest you do. Exactly However, right. You know, if you can find another way, and I very often say that you may find a different way of doing something. That's fine. It's just that we have to generalize. We have to say that this, on a general basis, this is what works for me, and will probably work for you as well. But I've got no objection to people using whatever they feel. And uh, I'm sure Jason would agree with that. It's yeah. Cool. And the most useful tool I use is just rubbing things in with my fingers. 
and smudging them. Oh, oh, absolutely, yes. yes. It's better than that. that finger. I've always wondered, Jason, that um, after all these years of using my finger, whether I've still got any finger... Um, fingerprints. Fingerprints left. Yeah. Well, I really haven't on those two fingers. Yeah, it was an interesting thing to close up that um, we've got a local gym that I go to and you've got to use your fingerprint to get into the gym. Oh, and, um, so you don't use those two fingers, you... Oh, I, yeah, my index fin finger to get into the gym. So I did that. And then I had a, a month or so where I was doing lots and lots of drawings. And I was going over there and I couldn't, it was always failing every time and I couldn't understand it. And she was saying, well, everybody is working for everybody else. I thought, strange. And when I looked at my finger, I had virtually no fingerprint on me. That's right. That's right. So that is true. And, that, and that's with pastel mat. If you use the sandpapers, one go on that and your fingerprint's yeah. literally gone you can't do it but but it is so now i gotta get in with my thumb in the gym because <laughs> i don't use that to blend my pastels <laughs> fantastic oh brilliant um well thanks guys so much um and thank you everyone for sending your questions this has been a bit of a mammoth video um but i'm so pleased that we could get together and do this and hopefully we'll get together and do more in the future um i hope everyone's found it so interesting thank you so much jason Absolute pleasure. It's great to do it. And thank you so much, Dad. That's it. Uh, that's, I echo that. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to check out Jason's channel uh, and his Patreon and check out our website and our YouTube channel. Do follow us for more updates and more videos, hopefully coming soon to you guys and more collaborations uh, like this. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And drop us a comment in below, perhaps mentioning your favourite part. Or if you have a question for next time, do get in touch with us. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.